I'd like to have a moment of silence, if we could, for Amy Winehouse, actually. Ah. On, uh, on Dan's uh, mention of that. I, I don't know if you guys actually heard this. I'm just going behind this. It's awkward. I don't know if you guys actually heard this, but one of the, the theories right now about Amy's death was... Uh, not that she passed away from a massive overdose, but that she was actually trying to get clean and that the shock to her system from giving up the alcohol was what took her. Did you guys hear this? This is like a thing out there right now that she was trying to kick the booze and it was such, it, it, it was such a shock that she died. So now every time my girlfriend's like, how many beers did you have? I'm like, you want me to die? Because, <laughs> you know, I could if I stopped drinking. She helped me out on that one. It was the last good thing she did, is uh, Amy Winehouse. <laughs> I'm having a great summer. You guys having a fun summer? Yeah. yeah. I did all kinds of shit I'd never done before this summer. I went camping for the first time. There's a lot of experience outdoorsmen here. Yeah? Yeah. Yes. yeah. Go camping a lot. It's, it's really nice. I mean, we went up to this like secluded nature spot up there and uh, somewhere. I don't, I don't know where I am. <laughs> and, and, you know, like, we're out there, and I'm looking out, and it's beautiful, it's serene, you hear loons and shit, you know, and, <laughs> and it's kind of like, I don't know if you guys, if you watch a lot of CBC growing up, it's kind of remind me of one of those, uh, those, those part of Canadian hinterland commercials. Yeah. The, not the Heritage Men, it's the hinterland. No, the who's who. The who's, the who's who in Canada's hinterland. Yeah, this guy knows it, man. Yeah, you know, it always started out with that musical tone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ex yeah, ex except, you know, like, I, so I'd be up there, and except, I don't know shit about nature, right? So, and, and I, I was smoking weed, like, the whole weekend, and like, getting drunk, so I was, like, really paranoid about what the fuck was surrounding me in the woods. You know, so, like, I'm there in my, in my tent, and, I, and I'm sleeping, and I'm sleeping next to my girlfriend, and, and, and I hear, like, a rustle or some shit outside the tent, and right away, I, I'm, I'm inside one of those Canadian Hinterland commercials again, and I just hear the musical tone go off, doo 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 doo, -doo, -doo. Velociraptor. <laughs> the most deadly and diabolically intelligent of all of Canada's hinterland. <laughs> Sustaining itself primarily on a diet of Samuel Jackson. <laughs> leaving behind only the occasional arm to ward off the Laura Durns from its hunting ground. <laughs> the Velociraptor run wide because we're being hunted. <laughs> but then it was just my girlfriend snoring in the tent. Next time. There was no cause for alarm whatsoever. Um, a lot of this summer, I'll be honest, I've uh, spent it in the uh, Giant Tiger uh, variety store. <laughs> you guys know the Giant Tiger? We guys got to do a shop at the Giant Tiger. It's kind of, yeah. not so much a big in Quebec. It's they got it more like an Ontario and the Maritimes. But they got there's, a, there's like a location in Ville Saint. It's a great place. The Giant Tiger is. Uh, they got fireworks for cheap. Good prices on the fireworks. I bought some today. Fireworks are fun. Uh, I was in line the other day buying fireworks by these two old women, and uh, and they were buying cigarettes and whatnot, and because both those things are behind the uh, the cash. As they should be together, cigarettes and fireworks, and uh, and then the, the two old ladies were like, "Do you want to go in front of us?" I was like, "No, no, no I got to get something behind the cash too." They're like, "Are you buying cigarettes?" I'm like, "No, no, no, I'm buying fireworks. If I want to end my life early, I at least want it to be colorful and loud." <laughs> fireworks versus cigarettes. Um, they have interesting shit at the uh, Giant Tiger too. They have uh, brands of food that you've never seen before. Like, you get used to, to certain brands if you shop at most Quebec grocery stores. You, fucking... President's Choice. You know, President's Choice, or, or in terms of cheese and dairy products, lactancy and whatnot, and uh, Quebon. But at, at, um, at, the, at the Giant Tiger, I don't know where they get their stuff, um, but I, there is a brand of cheese. This is true at, at uh, a Giant Tiger called the, uh, the Knoxville. No, I'm sorry, Knoxdale. Knoxdale cheese. This is a real thing. It's Knoxdale cheese. As much as I like cheese, I don't want to buy Knoxdale cheese. I don't. Because um, frankly, and to be fair to Knoxdale, Knoxdale sounds like the kind of place where uh, dreams and hobos go to die. <laughs> I don't want Knoxdale cheese. <laughs> Summer is also a, a favorite time of uh, the year for me because of the, the big blockbuster movies that come out. I spend a lot of time in movie theaters in the summer. I don't know if you could tell by my uh, Lance Armstrong type physique, but 
Um, do you guys, you guys watch the movies, or do you like wait for the the, the, the DVD run? You guys check out the movies in the theaters to go do that. I mean, right now, I mean, right now we got a, we got a few things. A huge, like sort of typical blockbusters out there. One of the ones is um, is the, uh, the the new Transformers movie. You guys seen the new Transformers? Yeah. Where's Carlin Potter? Where is he? Right here. Yeah, there he is. You see, you, you saw that, right? Did you go see it yet? I know you're looking for someone to go see it with. No, I didn't. What's your mom been up to? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so Transformers 3. We've got Transformers 3 out there now. And, uh, and the subtitle for Transformers 3, of course, is Transformers 3 Dark of the Moon. Which actually sounds a lot like that, you know, the classic Pink Floyd album. Yeah. Tran <laughs> no, Transformers. <laughs> yeah, it's called Transformers. Uh, no, the dark side of the moon, the Pink Floyd album, right? And of course, and I don't know if you know about the, the, the famous urban legend slash possible reality surrounding the dark side of the moon album, where if you sync it up with the Wizard of Oz film, yeah. you get a whole crazy thing, right? You get, and also, you have to be on every drug ever invented. But, um, that helps. but interesting fact, if you sync up Transformers 3, Dark of the Moon, with the Pink Floyd album, Dark Side of the Moon, what you get, actually, is a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what happens there. I had a friend who was a huge into the cartoon, the, uh, the 1980s Transformers cartoon when he was a kid. He's not so much into the, uh, the movie, partially because he says the, the film is uh, far less realistic than the cartoon was. Um, <laughs> but, I mean, let's be fair. I mean, the Transformers cartoon came out of a, a far more innocent time, right? It came out of a time where every kid's show had a very special episode. You remember the very special episodes of the, the shows you grew up with? Those were the episodes that sort of like broke the fourth wall and dealt with an actual sort of important issue that might, you know, fuck you up, like drugs or alcoholism or whatever. And I, every, every kid's show, live action or anime, that had a very special episode. So, you know what I mean? Like you get, you know, to be... Inspector Gadget has a drinking problem, you know, uh, go-go Gadget Flask, and then, uh, you know, and then, and then, of course, with Transformers, there was, why does Optimus Prime have two dads? <laughs> that was a classic. Woo! <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, but my favorite of all the special episodes wasn't even one that was affiliated with an actual show. It was a special, and it was called Cartoon All-Stars to the Rescue. Yes. Yeah. Do you know this? This guy knows everything. I, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got buns, buns. Okay, now this, here's, here's, here's the awesome thing about this, right? It was an animated special, half-hour special, Reagan-era half-hour animated special. And it had Bugs Bunny, it had Ninja Turtles, it had Slimer from the real Ghostbusters, Alvin and the Chipmunks, all these people on, all these animated, and they all come together to help this one troubled teen who's on drugs. On weed. Oh, no, it's on much more shit than that because they find a box under the bed and there's all the other shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> there is, however, a hysterical scene, this is absolutely true, where Theodore from the Alvin and the Chipmunks gang uh, looks through his stuff and says, and one of the other chipmunks is like, what's that? And he's like, I believe what it's called is a marijuana. And it, it's, it's amazing. you got to check it out. It's all on YouTube. <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, but, so I mean, and, and obviously, the message of this cartoon was drugs are bad, don't do them. Straight up, straight forward, that's a very simple message, right? But what I took away from this cartoon is that if you do enough drugs, yeah. eventually, you will be able to see all your favorite cartoons in real life. <laughs> yes, I have my sense then. <laughs> Did I mention I've been spending a lot of time at Giant Tiger this summer? <laughs> there was these two old ladies in front of me at Giant Tiger, and they were... Uh, I mentioned them before they were buying cigarettes, which are neither loud nor colorful. And, uh, and then they were you know, talking, they were saying how uh, the other day in front of them at the uh, Giant Tiger line, they were being held up because there was this man, a, a tall man with tattoos. Most old people seem to think that all young people have tattoos. And uh, he was he was holding up the line, and, and she said, uh, she said, oh, he was terrible. He was being very rude. And I was there with uh, with Larry. I wasn't. Larry was getting angry because he was holding up the line so much. And Larry was going to say something to him, but I said, Larry, don't you say a word to him because you know how these people are. He's liable to take a knife and stab you right in the brain. And I'm like, what? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> 
And at this point, I mean, I was more scared of this old lady than I could have ever been of a tall man with tattoos because I didn't understand what kind of deviance this old lady had grown up with in her life that would make her think that some sort of conflict regarding taking up too much time in line would be settled by a knife to the brain. <laughs> it's a terrifying existence, indeed. I'm going to stop now. <laughs> Thank you very much, everybody.